Hello everyone, okay, I'm Cao Jianzhen, the director of Portuguese department at Hebei Normal University. And I have been working in Brazil in Confucius Institute for some 10 years. So today I'm greatly honored to, hear, to be here to share with you some information of Chinese culture. So now we'll come to talk about Chinese food. We say Chinese gastronomy, or in Chinese we say Zhongguo Mei Shi. Zhongguo is China. Mei Shi is sweet food or typical food. So today we'll talk about six parts. The first part is the greetings and the history, so the traditional Chinese way of greeting each other. And the second part will be about typical foods in China. And the third part will be four different gastronomical schools. And then we'll talk about important elements in the kitchen. And the fifth part will be culture and the philosophy, etiquette at the table. And in the end, okay, we'll try to put into practice what we talked about. We we'll try to do a popular dish in China. The first part about greetings. Traditionally in China, when we met each other, we ask, Chirlama, and that means, have you had your food or have you eaten? And also we have a website that is chilamabondu.com. Uh, in fact, this is a traditional greeting manners because in history of China, uh, we suffered a lot of uh, natural disasters and always, we are always, or we were always need of food. So we care a lot about if the others, our friends, our neighbors, have enough food. So we ask me, Chirlama, but today, okay, as we have stepped out of uh, hungry, we have st stepped out of starvation, we do not use Chirlama uh, in our daily life. But as a traditional expression, it continues to work. But the function is, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or how are you, or fine, or, or, or hi. So here I put a picture, okay, this is a typical picture in the old city of Beijing. So when the two old men met each other, they just greet each other as Chiloma, and the one is with a walking stick, the other is with a bird cage. So this is a traditional image of the people in Beijing. And then okay, we're trying to know a little bit of our traditional food at the breakfast. So different from the Westerners uh, who have bread okay, uh, for, their, for their daily life or especially for their breakfast. In China, we have other typical foods such as uh, baozi or jiaozi or huajiu or something like that. But these are typical foods in the North of China because in the north of China we do not have enough water we say that we have more food with weeds so those these are typical foods in the north of China and also okay we have you tiao okay some people uh, translate it as fried noodle stick but I know okay this is really typical in the north of China especially in Beijing and then okay, in other uh, cities such as in Xi'an, they have uh, typical food like rou jia mo, okay, that is something like pancake, but with 
of with meat, something like sandwich in the Western countries, but it is a Chinese sandwich with meat. Okay. And then, okay, uh, different from the Westerners uh, who, uh, who drink a lot of milk in China, uh, traditionally, okay, we drink a lot soy milk. Okay. So this is quite different from the Europeans okay, who drink a lot of milk. And also, we eat another kind of sandwich. Okay, we call it Liu Rou Huo Shao. We eat a lot of donkey's meat. This is quite interesting because Chinese really enjoy it. And also, we have an expression we say, "Shang Yu Long Rou, Xia Yu Liu Rou," or something like in the paradise. Okay. The meat of dragon is the most delicious, and on the earth, the the meat of donkey okay, is the most delicious. So that's something about uh, our food, our greeting manners in China, and then we talk a little bit, a little bit about the history or of the evolution of Chinese food. So in the primitive society, okay, people didn't have fire, so they just eat uh, the 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 wild animals, okay, without fire. And then with fire, okay, the, their life quality has improved a lot. So we could find a lot of things to prove that the primitive society, pure people, they have known how to fish. So and they they get birds okay uh, who help them to to catch fish. So here okay, I put these two uh, vases. This is something in the Neolithic period in Yangshao. We call it Yangshao Wenhua culture of Yangshao, which was discovered in the 1955 okay in the city of Xi'an. Which proved that the primitive people has improved uh, their their life, and then okay, we stepped into the bronze period. We call it the Qing Tongqi. During this period, we in uh, we find a lot of tree pot vessels. So in these tree pot vessels, you could find okay, there are a lot of carvings okay, which are really delicate carvings. These are also used as a pot to cook food. So here I just show you okay, some of these uh, bronze okay, uh, vessels or vessels okay, which are really dedicated, uh, we are dedicated to cooking or to drinking, but they are really uh, fabricated okay, delicately. So these are some of the vessels the ancient people, especially in the Shang Dynasty, okay, they use them to drink. They are really uh, made of bronze. And here, okay, you have a four feet uh, vessel, okay, which we call it a ding. Okay, this is really something typical uh, in the bronze period of time. And then here, can okay, just show you, okay, the knife, okay, which was used in this period. They used a knife, but really beautiful knife to cut a uh, meat, okay, to to help their cooking. So here I put this picture, okay. This is uh, an animal, which uh, people usually can say is a tao tie. It's one of the animals which eat a lot or which ate a lot. Okay. So I just put it here, okay, they are really difficult to write these two words. Okay, it's a kind of animal but which ate a lot. So today when we say people ate a lot and people is greedy, we say Tao Tia is something like that. So, in comparison with the ancient vessels, about the modern ones, they are much more simple, okay? much more ugly, <laughs> we say it's ugly, but we use it much easier okay, to cook. So, this is just a comparison of the cooking vessels in bronze time and also in modern times.
So and then we'll try to talk about some traditional specialties. So in different places of、uh, China, okay, we have different、uh, specialities, or we say unique food, such as okay, we have niangao in the north of China. So Chinese really enjoy a lot of niangao. We call it New Year cake, and also because the word nian is the the pronunciation is the same with the word stick. It is really stick, but it is also served at the New、uh, Chinese New Year time. So this is something typical in the north of China, and also we eat a lot of jiaozi, especially during the Spring Festival time. Okay, we when the whole family get together, we make jiaozi together. Not only we we eat jiaozi、okay, during Spring Festival time. During the vacations, during the weekends, also、uh, we made jiaozi together. And here I shows you some other okay,、uh, special specialties in different、uh, places, such as jian bing guo zi. This is something typical in the city of Tianjin, which is、uh, some 30 minutes okay by train from Beijing, okay, east of Beijing. But Tianjin is also Uh, one of the earliest part, okay, open to the Westerners. So it is a city which is both with the Chinese style and also with the Western style. And besides the Jian Bing Guo, also we have Chun Jiu Er, which is spring roll, because、uh, usually okay, we we eat it at springtime, but nowadays okay we can eat it all the year round. But still, it is called Chun Jiu Er. And then I put here, okay, zongzi. Zongzi is a typical food that we we eat, okay, during、uh, we say the Dragon Boat Festival. That is the fifth day of the fifth month of Chinese lunar calendar, which is a food, okay, we use to memorize, okay, one of the greatest poet Qu Yuan. So this is in the whole China, and also for the Chinese, okay. Abroad, they maintained this tradition when uh when when uh arrives at May uh the fifth, or we say Dragon Ball Festival day, they eat or they eat zongzi.、Okay? And uh in China, every every holiday or every holiday uh every festival is closely connected with a special kind of food. So here I put tang yuan, okay, or the tang yuan, okay. So this is something、uh, really typical on the 15th day of January in Chinese lunar calendar. This is the only sweet food which serves the whole country,、uh, because Chinese, in fact, do not eat a lot of. Sweet food, but this is one. Okay, so during this day or this, we also call the Lantern Festival, the 15th day of January. We eat tangyuan, and then okay, we come to、uh, Qingming. So this is usually okay、uh, at the very beginning of April. So this is also called. Uh, the day okay to memorize uh, our uh, ancestors. So in the south of China, especially in Zhejiang Province, okay, they have a special food. They call it Qing Tuan because they use the the juice of a kind of grass, okay, to make it to look green. So this something stick, but it is really popular in the south of China, especially in the province of Zhejiang. And then here I put some、uh, different dishes, okay, in China in different、uh, forms with different tastes, which serve different purpose in different areas of China. So we could find here that Chinese, in fact, okay, eat a lot of vegetables. Okay. And then I put it here, jiaozi. So this is the most favorite food in China. So we can stick jiaozi, we can put it in boiling water, and also we can fry the jiaozi. So we have different ways, okay, you to eat the jiaozi. Anyway,、uh, wherever you go in China, especially in the north of China, you can find people eat jiaozi, okay, from morning till night. 
So if you use hot water to cook jiaozi, we say zhu jiaozi because they put it in boiling water. Or you can fry it, because okay, that's another way. And then here I put something, the traditional dishes, something like fish. The Chinese, uh, so do not have the tradition, especially in the north of China, we do not have the tradition to eat fish. But when we eat fish, we have the, the, the whole fish or the whole body of the fish. And with fish, we have a lot of culture. So when you eat fish first, okay, you put it in a, in a dish. And if it's a banquet, who is the oldest? Who is the, uh, the most respected? Or who will pay? So we will face okay, the head of fish. And who is the mainly important, okay, will be uh, seated at the other, the other side. And besides, okay, another tradition with fish, uh, the dish of fish is the most important dish in, uh, uh, in, in marriage or uh, in the, uh, the last day, we say, at the eve of Chinese New Year, when the whole family get together. The most important dish is fish because the pronunciation yu means the rest. Everyone wants to have more, to have rest in the coming year. So fish for the Chinese has another meaning. So it is an auspicious dish. Okay? And then I put in some put something here, okay, something like xia jiao. This is a typical food in Guangdong province, or people say Gandong, okay, in Guangdong province. So if you go to Guangdong, okay, if you go to Gandong, if you go to Macau or Hong Kong, you can find, okay, if uh, they eat a lot of xia jiao because they are literal areas and they have a lot of shrimps so they put shrimps okay in the in the jiao, in the jiaozi so this is rather typical okay in china and then put it here uh, a typical food, food okay typical dish of kou rou we call it a mei cai kou rou this is typical in the city of hangzhou which is closely connected with the famous poet su dong po okay? So I really wish one day if you come to China, you can visit Hangzhou and you can have a taste of Dongpo Kou Rou. Okay? And then uh, about uh, birthdays. So the Westerners okay, use a lot or ate a lot of birthday cakes. But in China, traditionally, we do not have this kind of cakes or we say birthday cakes in China. We ate a lot or still eat a lot of noodles. We call it chang shou mian. So uh, you, this is something, okay, the taste of family, the taste of mothers, right? Mothers really wish their children to live a longer life. So this is something typical in China. Uh, instead of uh, cake, okay, we eat noodles, okay, longer noodles for you to have a healthy and a longer life. And during the busy time, besides having chang shou mian, also we have a shou tao. This is a peach for longevity. This is something closely connected to Taoism with the paradise, because in the paradise we have another uh, king, okay, another emperor, we call it Emperor Jade. So in the paradise, okay, they have a kind of peach which blossom, uh, which green, uh, which blossom, okay, uh, within some 3,000 years, and it really takes 9,000 years to get a kind of peach. So peach is a food for longer, uh, for longevity. So in uh, in some in some countries in some provinces, okay, such as in Shanxi and the Shan Shanxi, okay, they have a lot of food made with wheat flour, especially during the birthdays, uh, something like the 12th birthday or the 60th birthday, something like that. They prepared okay all the food with 
a meat flower. Okay, this is really something. It's a kind of art. It's really something fantastic. I wonder if they can be eaten. But anyway, they are beautiful. So here, okay, it shows a tradition in the province of Shanxi. When a boy arrives, okay, 12 years old, they will have a special birthday celebration. So here, okay, this boy is celebrating uh, his birthday. I think he his horoscope is tiger. So they put a tiger made of wheat flour, okay, on his head, and they put this cake, okay, Chinese cake, around his neck. And then, okay, about how to, okay, how to uh, prepare Chinese food. In fact, we have different manners. In the south of China, such as in the province of Guangdong, okay, in the city of Shanghai or Zhejiang, uh, they do not eat uh, salty foods. Okay, they they prefer okay light and sweet. And in the province of Sichuan or in the city of Chongqing. Because it is humid, so people there uh, eat a lot of hot food with a lot of peppers. So this is really something typical. Okay? Uh, so today, uh, hot food has spread all over of China, not only during winter time, is also in summer time people eat hot food. Okay? And then here I put uh, here okay a typical. Uh, Chinese food we call the hot pot or huo guo, okay, huo guo. So for this huo guo, you can mix every food. You can mix meat, okay, duck meat. Uh, you can meat uh, mix with lamb meat or ox. Or also you can you can put in this hot pot. Uh, different kinds of food, uh, different kinds of vegetables, or different kinds of fish, or different kinds of shrimps. So in this hot pot, uh, in fact, okay, this is something uh, a symbol of a family get together or something like a friendship. You meet with people, you invite them to eat together. Uh, but I wonder, okay, with COVID-19, people still continue this tradition. Maybe we will change a little bit, okay, due to the influences of COVID-19. And so today we have small hot pot. Still we have hot pot, but it's it's individual. You have hot pot for everyone. Okay? You do not share uh, the hot pot with the others. And then about uh, here, I put something really something typical about Chinese cha. We say tea in English. We say tea. So during a uh, Mid Autumn Festival, that is on the 15th of August, that is Mid Autumn period in China. So we have a special food which is called the Yue Bing, Yue E Moon Bing, a cake or moon cake. Okay, moon cake. We eat moon cake and we drink tea. So this is something typical. Is something closely connected with Mid Autumn Festival okay, because usually the the earth okay, is round okay, at its full fullest, and the Yue Bian or the moon cake is also round. So for the Chinese, the round moon symbols okay family. Uh, get together or the reunion with family members. So that's why okay, a moon cake is really made rounded. But in south of China, especially in the province of Guangdong, they have squared yue bing. So this is something different. And in the north of China, we have yue bing, sweet ones. And in the south, they have salty ones. They put it, uh, they put fillings uh, like meat. Or something, something like that, right? And then another food uh, we we eat, okay, on the eighth day of December is Ba Bao Zhou. Ba eight, Ba Bao Zhou. We eat the porridge with eight elements, okay, with rices, with beans, with uh, sorghums, okay, with goat berry. So this is something closely connected with Buddhism. 
So it is said that 8th of December is the anniversary of Buddha. So in the temples, they offer Ba Bao Zhou okay, to the visitors on this day. So if you are visiting China, maybe you can try to have a look, try to taste this Ba Bao Zhou. I wonder if you like a kind of mixture with rices, with beans, with goji berry and with uh, dates, okay, mix a lot of things, sometimes more than eight. Okay. So, uh, and then another part I want to talk about is about noodles. So when we talk about Chinese food, we think about Italian food. So they are, they are really similar. So in Chinese, we have uh, uh, jiaozi or dumplings. So in Italy, they have havioli. And in China, we have noodles, we call it mian tiao. And in Italy, they have spaghetti. So in China, we have something like uh, 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 pancakes, okay, pancakes. And in Italy, they have pizza. So it's really interesting, okay, China and Italy shared a lot of similarities when we talk about the food. But in China, okay, we have uh, many kinds of noodles, many kinds of mian tiao. So in Beijing, for example, the typical food of mian tiao, okay, in Beijing is jia jiang mian. They have some restaurants which only serves jia jiang mian, and together with jia jiang mian, they serve eight vegetable dishes. So this is something different from spaghetti. So in spaghetti, you have a lot of cheese. For the Chinese, okay, it's, it's really something heavy. So if you have a lot of cheese, right? And also we have tang mian. That means we put the noodles in hot water and we put some other vegetables, okay, uh, especially during cold winter. So if you have a, a bowl, um, tang mian, you will feel uh, hot okay, or warm. And also we have fried, fried noodles with a chow mian. Uh, so in Japanese, they call it yakisoba. So for, I worked in Brazil for some 10 years. So in Brazil, we can send uh, the influence of the Japanese food. So in Brazil, they use the word in Japan, yakisoba, to refer to the fried noodles in the Chinese way and also in the Japanese way. Okay. So this is something really cheap and fast food. It's kind of fast food. You can prepare it very quickly. Okay. And also we can find a lot of uh, something like snack bars okay, by the roadside. Okay. It's really something uh, typical. Okay. And uh, in the city of Lanzhou, we have a really uh, famous mark, okay, a brand of noodles that is la mian. Okay, la mian they do not use knife; they just use two hands, okay, to to produce or to make this la mian. So you just push, you pull and push. So the most famous mark or brand of la mian is Lanzhou la mian. But there are a lot of stories about Lanzhou la mian. It is said that the most famous Lanzhou la mian is from the province of Qinghai. But anyway, okay, if you are interested in this story, you can try to figure it out. Okay, where is the a region of Lanzhou la mian? But anyway, okay, you eat noodles with beef. So this is something, I think, the influence from the Tang Dynasty. I just assisted some videos about the food during the Tang Dynasty. Uh, during the Tang Dynasty arrived a lot of people from uh, the Western Asia countries, the, uh, uh, the Arab countries. So they bring their food to China. And then okay, we have something like a Dao Xiao Mian. You, you use a knife, you cut uh, the noodles into pieces, so you put it in hot water and then you ate it. This is something typical in the province of Shanxi. Okay. So now, okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, 
the schools of Chinese cuisine. So it's really difficult to see how many schools do we have in China. Some people say four, some people say eight or nine. But to be simple, we just say four. So we say Zhongguo Si Da Cai Xi. So first, we talk about the Chinese cuisine. Okay, in Shandong province, we call it Lu, okay, Lu Cai. So this is the hometown of Confucius, the greatest philosopher, the greatest educator, okay, uh, who really influenced not only China, but the whole world in the past 2,500 years. So one of the characteristics of Lu Cai is that you have a great quantity and you have full something a, a little bit oily, a little bit salty, because in the north of China it is cold. People need to eat more salty foods. Okay, uh, So this is something typical. And the one typical food is we call it uh, uh, okay, they call it meatballs uh, for happiness. So usually you okay, put food together. This is the typical food okay, in the wedding ceremonies and also in the family get together. Okay, people want to have happiness from the four uncles, right? Lu Cai Feng Wei Tese, Xian Xian Wei Zhu. Lu Cai, Jiang Jiao Yuan Liao, Zhi Di Yu Liang, Yi Yan Ti Xian. 以汤壮鲜葱烧蹄筋利用高汤提鲜烧过则老清除分明取其清鲜珍馔美味注重礼仪
、赤豹席、海参席、燕翅席、四四席等，都能体现出鲁菜典雅大气的一面。鲁菜的传统名菜，糖醋鲤鱼，特点：鱼尾翘起，色如琥珀，外焦里嫩。鲤鱼跳龙门的造型，大酸大甜的口味，表达了金榜题名、新婚花烛等人生大喜的欢欣之情。芙蓉鸡片，特点：吃鸡不见鸡，清鲜软嫩，色泽洁白，形如芙蓉。葱烧海参，特点：海参清鲜、柔软、香滑。葱香浓郁，富含胶原蛋白，却不含胆固醇，是不可多得的健康营养佳品。九转大肠，特点：色泽红润，质地软嫩，兼有酸、甜、苦、辣、咸五味俱全，是中餐中罕见的一道菜，五味俱全的著名菜品。汤爆双脆，特点：质地脆嫩，汤清质淡，味道香醇。蝴蝶海参，特点：成菜好似彩蝶纷飞，赤质暄软，蝶体滑糯，咸鲜可口，营养丰富。乌鱼蛋汤，特点：鱼蛋壮若花瓣，质地轻柔。味道鲜美，微咸、微酸、微辣，调味平衡和谐，妙不可言。德州扒鸡，特点：鸡皮光亮，色泽红润，肉质肥嫩。热吃时，手提鸡骨一抖，骨肉随即分离，香气扑鼻，味道鲜美，是德州传统风味。And then we have another school that is Chuan Cai, uh, from province of Sichuan. Okay, so province of Sichuan is uh, located in a humid uh place. So uh, due to the humid, they eat a lot of hot food to to take off the humidity in their body. So nearly all the food in Sichuan is hot. They use a lot of peppers. So if you are traveling Sichuan, you have if you do not want hot food, if you do not want pepper, you have to tell them you do not want it. Even if okay,、uh, still you you can taste this hot food. Nearly everything is hot in Sichuan, so we have some typical foods okay in Sichuan. Chuan Cai's taste. Chuan Cai's taste is very rich, so it's 百菜百味，其中最为著名的当属鱼香、麻辣、辣子、陈皮、椒麻、怪味、酸辣猪味。调制这些复合味有很大的难度，但若掌握了它们的配方及调制方法，基本上也能学得八九不离十。味型特点：川菜清鲜醇浓，麻辣辛香，一菜一格。百菜百味，川菜有麻、辣、甜、咸、酸、苦六种，在六种基本味型的基础上，又可调配变化为多种复合味型。在川菜烹饪过程中，如能运用味的主次，浓淡、多寡、调配变化、加之选料、切配和烹调得当。即可获得色香味型俱佳的、具有特殊风味的各种美味佳肴。川菜特点是突出麻、辣、香、鲜、油大、味厚、重用三椒：辣椒、花椒、胡椒和鲜姜。调味方法有干烧、鱼香、怪味、椒麻、红油、姜汁、糖醋、荔枝。蒜泥等复合味型，形成了川菜的特殊风味，享有一菜一格、百菜百味的美誉。菜式特点。
主要有高级宴会菜式、普通宴会菜式、大众便餐菜式和家常风味菜式四个部分组成。四类菜式既各具风格特色，又互相渗透和配合，形成一个完整的体系，对各地各阶层，甚至对国外。都有广泛的适应性。十大经典川菜：川味火锅、水煮鱼、回锅肉、麻婆豆腐、鱼香肉丝、水煮肉片、辣子鸡、酸菜鱼、宫爆鸡丁、甜皮鸭。And then we have another part that is Huaiyang. We say Huaiyang Cai. It's really something light. Okay, in the、uh, province of Jiangsu, province of Sichuan,、uh, province of Zhejiang, in the city of Shanghai, this area. So it is、uh, hot. Okay, during, especially during winter time. So. The characteristic of Huaiyang Cai something they, they are really light. Okay, they have small quantities. So this is completely different from Lu Cai. Huaiyang Cai 特点，风味特色，口味清鲜平和，咸甜浓淡适中，南北皆宜，并且淮扬菜的选料尤为注重鲜活、鲜嫩。制作精细，注意刀工，尤以瓜雕享誉四方。调味，清淡味，强调本味，重视调汤，风味清鲜，色泽鲜艳，清爽悦目，造型美观，别致新颖，生动逼真。菜式繁多，体系庞大，做工精细，特别讲究刀工，注重菜品形态和雕刻。色香味型俱佳，淮安菜选料讲究时令新鲜，原料以河鲜比重较大，醉蟹不看灯，风鸡不过灯，刀鱼不过清明，鲟鱼不过端午。烹饪善用火候，擅长炖、焖、煨、雾、蒸、烧、炒，风格雅丽。原料鲜活。扬州位于长江沿岸，古老的京杭大运河在这里与长江交汇，有高邮湖、宝应湖等中小型湖泊镶嵌其中。璀璨的历史和灿烂的文明在这里共辉，世境跨京杭大运河两岸，一年四季水产情蔬也未不断，所以。淮扬菜的原料以鲜活为主，这也为在烹法上擅长炖焖、调味、注重本味提供了物质基础。刀工精细，四大菜系中，淮扬菜刀工最精细。一块两厘米厚的方干，能劈成三十片的薄片，切丝如发，冷菜制作，拼白手法要求极高。一个扇面三拼。抽缝、扇面、叠角，寥寥六字，但刀工拼摆难度较大。精细的刀工、娴熟的拼摆，加上精当的色彩配伍，使得淮扬菜如同精雕细凿的工艺品。注重本味，淮扬菜既有南方菜的鲜、脆、嫩的特色，又融合了北方菜的咸。色浓特点，形成了自己酸甜适中、咸中微甜的风味。由于淮扬菜以鲜活产品为原料，故而在调味时追求清淡，从而能突出原料的本味。火工讲究，淮扬菜肴根据古人提出的“以火为祭”的烹饪纲领，秉中之变，精妙微鲜。通过火工的调节，体现菜肴的鲜、香、酥、脆、嫩、糯、细、烂等不同特色。淮扬菜擅长炖、焖、烧、煮，因为这几种方法能较好的突出原料本味。
富裕变化。就淮扬菜制作菜肴的工艺来看，富裕变化，想象力丰富。一款三套鸭，加鸭套野鸭，野鸭套菜鸽，用火腿、冬笋做辅，逐层套制，三位一体。淮扬菜富裕变化的特点可见一斑。淮扬菜经典菜品，有清炖蟹粉狮子头、文丝豆腐、软兜长鱼、淮安茶散、大煮干丝、三套鸭、水晶羊肉、清炖圆鱼、砂锅野鸭等，其菜品细致精美，格调高雅。And then、uh, the last of the four, okay, we talk about the Guangdong Cai. Okay, Guangdong Cai of Cantonese, we call it Cantonese, right? So in Guangdong Cai,、uh, people in in Guangdong, in fact, they eat a lot of kinds of animals <laughs> or insects, probably. Okay, so、uh, usually they have small quantities, but they have a variety of food. Yue Cai 特点。质和味，粤菜用量精而细，配料多而巧，装饰美而艳，而且善于在模仿中创新，品种繁多。一九六五年广州名菜梅典展览会介绍的就有五千四百五十七种之多。粤菜注重质和味，口味比较清淡，力求清中鲜，淡中求美。而且，随季节时令的变化而变化。夏秋偏重清淡，冬春偏重浓郁，追求色、香、味、形。地理优势，广东的饮食一向得天独厚。自秦汉开始，中原汉人不断南迁进入广州，他们不但带来了先进的生产技术和文化知识，同时也带来了。惠不厌细，食不厌精的中原饮食风格。用料，粤菜用料十分广泛，不仅主料丰富，而且配料和调料亦十分丰富。为了显出主料的风味，粤菜选择配料和调料十分讲究。配料不会杂，调料是为调出主料的原味，两者均以清新为主，讲求色香。味形，且以味鲜为主体，海鲜、河鲜一直是粤菜赖以生存的基本原料。食谱特色，粤菜最大特色便是用料丰富，配料多而巧，山珍海味，中外食品无所不有，可谓全国之冠。粤菜可选原料多，自然也就精细。粤菜讲究原料的季节性，不食不吃。有春扁秋里、夏三林、石鱼、龙东鲈、吃虾、清明虾最肥美。吃蔬菜要挑食菜，是指合季节的蔬菜，如菜心为北风起，菜心最甜。除了选原料的最佳肥美期之外，粤菜还特别注意选择原料的最佳部位。烹调方法，烹调方法有二十一种之多，有以蒸、炒、煎、焗、焖、炸、煲、炖、扣等见长。讲究火候，由重火起和现炒现吃。做出的菜肴注重色、香、味、形，口味上以清、鲜、嫩、爽为主，而且随季节时令的不同而变化。夏秋力求清淡，冬春偏重浓郁，并有五滋：香、酥、脆、肥、浓，六味：酸、甜、苦、辣、咸、鲜之别。粤菜经典菜品，狭义上的粤菜指广府菜及广州府菜，广义上又包含潮州菜、潮汕菜、东江菜，也称客家菜。著名的广府菜有白切鸡、烧鹅、烤乳猪、太野鸡、红烧乳鸽
、蜜汁叉烧、脆皮烧肉、上汤焗龙虾等。著名的潮州菜肴：潮州卤水拼盘、潮汕牛肉火锅、卤水猪手、卤鹅肝、毛络、潮州打冷、芙蓉虾等。客家菜。又称东江菜、雁南飞茶田鸭、客家酿豆腐、梅菜扣肉、盐焗鸡、猪肚包鸡等。And then, uh, what are the important elements when we prepare cooking, prepare cuisine? First, you have to select. You have to select the materials. So, if you want to prepare Beijing 烤鸭 we say roasted ducks are Beijing. First, you have to find okay the the duck, not that big, not that small. It's a special kind of a duck. And then, okay, the second element for you to prepare good food is that you have to be skillful in cutting. You in use your knife. Okay, you have to cut. Put into small pieces, probably. Okay. You have to cut the vegetables into different kinds of forms okay, to attract uh, the eaters. Right? We call the eaters. Okay. And then another part in Chinese, we when we evaluate a dish, we we say wu wei ju quan, which means that you have five flavors. Okay. Sweet, salty, something like that. But sometimes more than five. But that's a traditional way of expressing okay, uh, typical food. Okay. And then you have to know. Uh, you have to know to how to control the fire. You need sometimes you do you do not need big fire. So these are something really typical. And then okay, the last point we try to maintain this. Harmonious, okay. Harmony, uh, between elements or between colors, okay, or between nutrients, okay. So I just showed you some soup, okay, typical soup from Guangdong, okay, or from the north of China. So the last part, uh, when we talk about China, people think of traditional Chinese medicine. We do not eat a lot of medicine, but we really try a lot uh, about treatment with food. Uh, so the Chinese believe, okay, different kinds of food or food of different colors will be uh, helpful, okay, will be something useful to our different ele elements part of our body. So we eat according to the colors sometimes, okay. So here I shows you a permit according to uh, the, the different elements, right? Okay, we call it Wu Se Shi Pian. Okay, five color food. And uh, in the end, something about culture and the philosophy. So, the Chinese, in fact, okay, food or the words reflect the Chinese philosophy. The food, uh, the, the or the name or the animals, okay, in fact, is a, a reflection of Chinese culture. So here I just show you something about the food in uh, or, or gastronomy in Chinese literature. So if you know something about Chinese literature, you can find okay uh, food in fact or gastronomy plays a key role in describing uh, the characters in different literature, such as in Dream of Red Dimension, we call the Hong Lou Meng, one of the four. Uh, classic literary works in China. So we say this is a set of books. Okay, is something like encyclopedia books because in this book you can find different kinds of information. Something like architecture, plants, flower, uh, and, and poetry. Something like food. So if you read okay Hong Lou maybe you can find. The ways okay took the best dishes in China, and here I just uh, put two pictures from TV series. 
So from the food, you can find or you can figure out the social status of people. So the first picture is a picture from a TV series about emperors. So you could find, okay, they have uh, uh, delicious food from the colors, you can find that, right? And the second one is also from a TV series, but you could figure out this is something really simple, right? So from the food, we can differentiate the social status of the characters. And here, okay, uh, pictures of Tang Dynasty. Okay, Tang Dynasty uh, is the period that China reached its highest peak, okay, its internationalization during that period of time. There are a lot of women, okay, coming out of home, they can have get together, so this is a picture which shows their get together, or maybe a kind of afternoon tea, right? And then uh, in the Western way, also uh, food or gastronomy um, tries to show, okay, uh, Important events such as the Last Supper. So the Last Supper is a typical food, typical uh, typical painting. Okay, everyone in this picture with a different facial expression. So this is not the not a supper. It's a, it's a reflection of different people's characteristics, right? And then in Chinese way, okay, Chinese uh, we compare cooking as a kind of philosophy. Such as here, okay, the, the sentence we say, 至大国若烹小鲜, or the governance of a big country is similar to cooking a dish. You have to know all the elements. So this is really a metaphor, okay, metaphor, which is really interesting. And then we talk a little bit about the cooking utensils. In the Western food, they use something like knife, fork, spoon. But in Chinese way, okay, Chinese way is really simple. We just use chopsticks to use everything. So it's really simple, right? Okay, we call it a kuaizi, okay? And uh, about table manners, in Western food, they use square table. But in China, we use a lot of round table because we, we really wish everyone to sit equal. We really want this uh, get family get together. So this is a quite this is quite different, okay. And then okay, uh, about etiquette, or we say table manners. When we get together in China, the oldest or the most important or who, who will pay usually sits far from the door. So this is really typical in China. Okay? Uh, Besides etiquette, also we have some food, we say snack food, or eating in the street, in, especially in summer. In the south of China, it is typical. In the north, it's a little bit difficult in winter because of the coldness. But in summer, we have a lot of snack bars. Okay. It's uh, people eat and they drink beer, something like that. Okay. So in the banquet, this is something like a banquet. In a banquet, uh, traditionally, we put 14 uh, chairs around the table, around, uh, around a big table, right? And then the last part, how to prepare typical Chinese food, okay? Uh, we are not professional chefs, right? We, we can prepare a dish in your daily life. So that is xi hong xi chao ji dan. The Chinese really uh, eat a lot. I mean, xi hong xi is tomato, chao is fried, ji dan egg. So that is a really easy dish. We can practice okay, after the class. So first you prepare tomatoes, prepare uh, eggs, and then put, you cut tomatoes into small pieces and you put uh, the eggs okay, in a bowl and then you, you cut uh, the onions and then you, you just light the fire and you, you cook, you put oil, when the oil gets hot, you put the egg, you mix it and then you take it out and then you put the tomatoes into the, 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 the pot and then mix it, in the end you put uh, the eggs, okay, you mix it 
and now you can serve it with rice or with noodles. So that is really an easy dish. Everyone can try to prepare it, practice it okay, after class. So in the end, I'll give you some homework. So here we have some some 100 chapters, okay, mini video, something like two or three minutes in Hello China. So you can find all these mini videos, what is dumplings, about its culture, what is roasted duck, kao ya, all about the tang hulu. So after class, maybe you can try to assist these videos, try to figure out these uh, typical Chinese food, okay, or how do we use chopsticks, how do we drink tea, how do we eat fish. So these are the references, okay, or homeworks for you. So thanks a lot, okay, 谢谢. I really wish you uh, a healthy new year, okay, thank you very much.